Okay! Tonight's extravaganza we have, as guests, at least one surveying member from every classic rock band to answer your questions and entertain you with stories of tour buses, hotels, groupies, crooked label reps and fresh young kids writing articles for a new magazine called Rolling Stone. Learn how the road was back in the day. The availability of hoppers and grass. Playing in bars when the drinking age was 18, and everyone had long hair and a mustache, so just about anyone could pass for 18. The Wilson sisters, from heart will tell tales of fans desperate for just one moment of conversation. Stevie Nicks will reminisce about anything she can remember from back then, and the always comical, Alice Cooper, will wrap up the show with a 20-minute lecture on his experiences with Frank Zappa and the good Captain Beef Heart. After the lecturers have snorted all our coke and drank all our jack, Nathan will bring us back to the modern era with one of his beautiful solo performances, that if you are prepared, you can press record on your tape decks and capture for listening to later. This show will be so packed it will be commercial free, thank you to the good folks at the Fillmore East, who ransacked the Almond Brothers tour bus, and pawned all that was stolen to pay for tonight's show. Get cranked up as this is going to be a good one! Bell bottoms and halter tops baby! Let's cut the rug! Let the classic rock take us back again! And the cassette plays pop tones! Probably only Daryl will get that reference, but what the heck! Give the people what they want! Jabber John, playing live at Woodstock, in front of 10 million lovers and free souls! Ride the waves! We'll be releasing a double album later this year with promotional rolling paper included. Three little frogs sitting on a log, one of them fell in. One frog said to the other frog, well you better go get it. Two little frogs sitting on a log, one of them fell in. Last little frog he sat and thought, good thing they can swim. Jabber John. Jabber John. Jabber John. Jabber John. Three little frogs sitting on a log, one burst into a grin. One frog said to the other frog, wonder what's got into him. Two little frogs sitting on a log, one laughed until he is red. Last little frog he sat and thought, must have been something I said. Jabber John. Jabber John. Jabber John. Jabber John. Hello, and we're back. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Jabber John at your service. I'm Nathan Moore, this is Kyle Hogg, Steve Moore. Good to see you out there. Kick back, enjoy. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat here to see what you have to say. And uh, maybe you can help steer the conversation somewhere or another. Saul, good to see you out there. And here we are. Welcome back, guys. Good Welcome to be back. back. 61, huh? 61. I apologies out there. I forgot to update the the title of the show and add your text the way I usually do. I'll fix that on YouTube after we go off air. I'll I'll make it right. Post production. Right now, it's uh, anybody <laughs> watching. It says at the bottom, episode 59. Wow. <laughs> it has some of your old words in there. So don't that get time. too confused. You've not you've not a. Uh, Enter a rift in the space-time continuum. <laughs> you are in the present moment, as are we, and here we are. The, the speak for yourself. <laughs> what moment are you in? I have. I, it's it's not a new one, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not a real old one. It's it's definitely a rerun <laughs> of, of another one at some point in time. That's it's a rerun I mean. of a future episode. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> Yeah, I think that might have nailed it right there. Congratulations, everybody, for surviving the eclipse. Yeah. Did you guys do anything special to take it in? 
we went out and work and we all had the glasses. They actually had, had glasses, glasses like some 25 years ago or something. They were like bicentennial look. I said, where'd you get these from? They said, we've had them for 25 years or whatever it was. So they were probably, didn't even work anymore probably. Or so <laughs> <We You're>, were... <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> I used to keep a pair in my glove compartment in case I ran uh, had an eclipse that day. Right, and, yeah. and I sold that car so I didn't have oh, all right. I left the glasses in there. So, bam. Did but, you uh, did you go out and see it or? I, I walked down, uh, I decided to do my annual my animal behavior thing. So I decided I would go down to the duck pond mm -hmm. and uh, sit with the ducks and see how they reacted to it. And uh, I did that. Man, how did they react to it? Uh, they didn't pay any attention. <laughs> no. no? No. They ignored it. And that's just because it wasn't a total eclipse. Mm -hmm. We didn't, I mean, all it did was get cloudy and a little darker. It wasn't enough to change your behavior right. that mm -hmm. much. Uh, you had to be closer so to So you didn't have any glasses with I you? I did have glasses. Oh, you did? Yeah. Heather made, had glasses for us. Mm -hmm. And I did see it, and it was it was cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. Um, but I I didn't see a whole lot of the changes in the environment that you hear. The about cloud there. cover was a little sad. Yeah, the cloud the cloud. If it had been a clear day, it would have been it way would have more. Been, I could have seen a lot more. But uh, but it was but you know what was I thought was so wonderful is that I came back and watched it on TV and. I was watching the network's coverage, and they had their people out all along the, the zone there, all the way from Arkansas or tech, Mexico all the way up to Maine. And they just followed it with different reporters. And everywhere you went, there were just people just oohing on and just uh -huh. happy. And everybody was just feeling so good about the thing. It was just, and it was just so good in this country right now to see something that united everybody right. like that. It was so therapeutic to me to see, not to not have to worry about politics for a little while right. and just to say people are being people today and, and everybody was enjoying each other. Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody that told them they were crazy for driving to Arkansas, mm -hmm. they're saying, now nah, y'all are lazy. We're the cool ones, and <laughs> all these people are here are cool with me, and they were all. Everybody was happy. Yeah, that's, and that's one. Uh, that yeah, was a wonderful. Powerful. It was a wonderful energy mm -hmm. about the whole thing. Well, that's cool. As I a, felt that way when we were just talking about how the reason states declared a state of emergency was because of the huge influx of people that like every. Hundreds of thousands of people were all going to the. So, it, like, I, I started investigating, like, why people are being so weird and came out with this, like, life affirming v I idea that it's just so beautiful that that many people were excited about it and going to, to have an experience with so it. So, you didn't go down the rabbit hole of the uh, Texans were uh, afraid of all those Democrats coming in to the country <laughs> <laughs> at one time. Yep. You didn't go with that conspiracy? No, I, I, no I, I, I dipped my toe in the pool and decided <laughs> not to jump in. Perfect. Good for <laughs> you. Good call. Yeah, it was, it was cool. So I woke up today, and Lex had sent this text message about uh, this new music AI that just came out. And I wasn't necessarily expecting that much from it, but I followed the link that he sent, and oh my gosh, guys! What? It's just it, it's it'll just, make you think twice about the links I send. From now <laughs> on, <right? Yeah. laughs> it's true. It, it um, I just was not expecting it on the level that I found it. In what way? I, I well, I didn't it. expect any lyrics at all. Right. I, I thought it would be sort of electronic -y sounding music that sort of was influenced by styles, but I didn't expect it to sound just like audio recordings with vocals and everything. I mean, it's a hundred percent. I was flabbergasted. What kind is the voice artificial yep. or do they use? It's all artificial. But you can never tell. It sounds just like 
somebody. Can, could make, could they but, make it sound like anybody they wanted uh, to? Probably. I, well, but, we're about to find out. Yeah. I signed, I, I signed up for it. Oof. And the first thing I typed in was a country song about three frogs that have a talk show called Jabber John. Oh my gosh. And that'll be the first one there at the bottom. And this is its it, it didn't understand me. It, it thought it it starts singing a song about three frogs, one named Jabber, one named John, and another one named Bloke. <laughs> which I guess it did so it could rhyme with croak. Like oh. So, oh, yeah. so I did I did it <laughs> and it gives you two for each prompt. And so then I was I did a new prompt where it's I said no the frogs names are are Nathan Steve and Kyle and the show is called Jabber John but here's the here's its first try at my little text prompt down by the creek where the bullfrogs crow three little frogs named Jabber John and Blow they started a show talking about life and more the kings of the swamp with a little bit of love. Jabber was wise with a voice like deep thunder. John had charm, a smooth talker, and a real go getter. Bloke was the jester, always cracking a joke. You're bloke. Together they may make magic with the country crow. <laughs> Jabber John's country chat, reminding tales to tell from the lily pads to the mighty countryside they dwell. Ah. <laughs> Three frogs, wide-eyed, spread wisdom in their way. Hop on over to Jabber Jones and let your worries <laughs> play. <laughs> oh, perfect. Oh, what drop that? Can you believe that? <laughs> I, I, that's just remarkable. It's unbelievable. All right, so I, I guess go to the third one. This is when I corrected them on our names. In a little country pond where the water's calm and clear, three frogs named Steve and Nathan and Kyle had nothing left to fear. They hopped around all day, croaking tunes of a different sound. Little did they know their fame was soon to be found. <laughs> One evening by the fireflies, they had a heart to heart. They said, let's start show, but let's give it a catchy start. They jumped from lily pad to lily pad, spreading the word around. Jabber John is the name where froggy wisdom can be found. <laughs> Jumping in the pond with a croak and a song. Steve, Nathan, Kyle, hosting all night long. Jabber John. Talk show of the swamp, three frogs with stories, making memories to stars. Oh my god. You think we can get that guy to open the show? <laughs> yeah, well, he just did, I think. <laughs> no, I mean the live show. <laughs> when, we go out, wisdom. when we go out on the road. Can you believe that? That's just insane. It's insane. Now, is each one the exact same length, or do they, is it? I think they're about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and you can then say extend it. Okay. All right, so let's make one right now. And I think inspired by the song we were singing because of your sweatshirt, we should ask it to be in the style of a barbershop quartet. Okay. So in the style of a barbershop quartet, what do you want the song to be about? I'm going to go my mom leave. Uh, uh. <laughs> Did you well, get that? I, I, I want it to be about uh, mm, how much Jabber John helps people that are lonely. No. Oh. Okay. How are you going to word that, Lex? You want you want <laughs> throw a wrinkle in? What do you got, Kyle? Well, I thought Digger can create a song. I mean, they make up something from it, right? Oh, they do. Yeah. yeah. But we can keep at giving it instructions on what we want. Oh, okay. So, so. About, uh, say that again, Steve. Oh, I don't remember what I said. Something about keeping people from being lonely. Yeah, Three the Barbershop over. Quartet song. About a show. About a, yeah, about a talk show called Jabber John that helps keep people from being lonely. 
and you got to throw a, a wrinkle in there. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> God, why was my mind going blank? <laughs> <laughs> From being lonely and <laughs> staying healthy. No, like <laughs> you, you could add anything, any, like <laughs> any, dir any like, direction you want to go. Doesn't have to be topic. It could be. Uh, oh, it could be with a certain instrument, maybe. Or uh, um, what's barbershop quartet had with? Is this going to be the style? Stand-up bass? It's just uh, vocals. Uh, it's like a, usually a, um, a cappella. <laughs> Let's see if we can add an instrument to it. Pick an instrument. <laughs> well, look, it's 8.30 all of a sudden, everybody. Uh, well, I said stand-up bass. He said I couldn't add. No, you... I could. You, well, that's yes, I, say uh, that with a, with a stand-up bass. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, I mean, it... I, I could not believe it. Guys, you're, you're just, never going to sleep now. You're going to be doing that all the time. <laughs> it, uh, it really is official that, that how long does it take? Like, we are out of work. How long does it take? Like two weeks? Say, to what are you going to do now? Yeah, there's, 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 it is really. So, Barbershop Quartet song with a stand up bass about a talk show called Jabber John that keeps people from being lonely. <laughs> yeah, did you put Jabber John in quotes just in case? No. Put put stand up bass in quotes. All right, too. so here that's this is our prompt. It's a barbershop quartet song with a with a stand up bass about a show called Jabber John that helps keep people from being lonely. That helps us from being lonely. That <laughs> <laughs> helps us from being lonely, right? Well, there's that. <laughs> here we go. Generating. And they don't need a shot of whiskey or nothing. <laughs> <No. laughs> and I guess I, I I just they only give you for the free version. It's just like thirty credits a day, and it's like five oh. credits per song. So I don't have many. Cre I'm not sure exactly how many credits we're using up, but I think it will give us two of them, two versions of the idea now. All right, here we go. And then either one we can ex done. extend. They're done. Both it's, it's song done. ideas are completely Both song ideas. produced. I'm Mixed. ready. I'm ready. This is Mastered. exciting. All right. In a little country pond where That's the water's the, calm the and clear, three... Adjusting. Oh, here we go. Gather round, folks. It's time to tune in to the Jabber John Show, where the fun begins with swinging rhythms and melodies so fine. We'll chase away the blues like a glass of red wine. Every night at seven, tune your radios. I didn't know that's seven. That's what I was thinking. You put seven? Nope. That'll make you they probably looked it up. A host. He's a crooner with the heart so true, bringing joy and laughter to me oh, and shit. to you. Oh, look, the Jabba John Jive, it keeps us so You high. better not know about the mine. Jabba John Jive. <laughs> Did you hear together, that? The Jabba John Jive. No one left to strive. So true with a stand-up bass and harmony so sweet. <laughs> we forget about our worries. Dancing to the beat to bop, 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 bop. We should be on Lars Well. Wow. Get my steps in. So you didn't say seven o'clock? No. That is crazy. You didn't say that Crooner, I'm a singer? Nothing. 
Yeah, that's too much knowledge. It's crazy. You didn't say that I killed a man back in 1992, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the other one. Wow. I just don't even know what to say. Wait, I don't know. You get Billy play. says I'm getting a little emotional here. <laughs> <laughs> right? Have a round, folks. It's time to tune in to the Jabber John Show. Where the fun begins with swinging rhythms and melodies so fine. We'll chase away the blues like a glass of red wine. Same words. Every night at seven, tune your radio tie to the magical talk show that'll make you fly. The host, he's a crooner with a heart so true. Bring joy and laughter to me and to you. <laughs> oh, 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 the Jabber John Jive, it keeps us alive. So it's the same words. Yeah, same words. Together, no one yeah. left I guess to so. So true oh, my goodness. What is happening? You must be easy to find on online or something. I guess. Do you think it did that? How would they know? Did se unless Seven is like a time radio started back in the old days. It's a weird coincidence. So. Is it a weird coincidence? In the if it is a coincidence, it's very weird. But how would they know it started? Because it, what, what, what time is it now? Maybe they, since we're doing it now, they think. 20 after. It's so weird, though. There's no way it knows that we're live With the crazy now. show that starts at 717. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, back up. They have access to Facebook posts, probably. I mean, I, the other day I, I, I hit on uh, my telephone or computer or whatever, and I, I said I wanted to get a local uh, guttering estimate. And I hit it, and I looked at it, and I said, I don't think I want to fool with that, and I just turned it off. And right then, in the next five minutes, two minutes, I went to Facebook, and the first ad that came up was about gutter replacement. Right. Wow. Now, that's not a coincidence. Right, they're right. reading my mail, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what they're doing. They I guess like a quick Jabber John search of the web. Would yeah, there's not say, that many Jabber Johns, and they, they, they know. It's 7 o'clock. It yeah, does. Every, you, every post I put up says airs at 7 o'clock. Yeah. And they, uh, but those they, are good songs. They don't sound stupid. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm completely, completely floored. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how to process what, what's happened here. I, I, I saw, like, the, the video version of this dropped where you can, you can just say, like, any text or whatever, it will turn, a, it'll make a video of that text. And I didn't, I mean, I, I saw it and I was like, wow, that is unbelievable. But I never got to use it myself to see, like, if they were using stock footage, if they would just do a search and just sort of, like, bring you something that looks similar to what you described. But that is not what's happening. It is generating this stuff by In the pixel. Pond, yeah. Where the water is calm and clear. Three frogs I mean, the voice sounds like a real person. It sounds like a real person. And they yeah, they don't have somebody there reading a quick script. <laughs> I mean, it is generating that voice from ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so pick a style of music. Well, can I mention one thing? Before? Of course. Uh, this just reminded me of it. I saw this online, at the, or the Stanton, whatever. This sort of ties in. There's a guy, or I don't know if it was a guy, somebody wrote up, it's like a play where they have old recordings um, what's it called? Like they have recordings that weren't supposed to be released, like politicians and actors and actresses. Have you heard about this? Mm -mm. And they wrote this play, and they, these eight actors are going to be in Stanton for like a month or something. It's just you go watch them read like old, you know, taped recordings or phone calls. And they said it's really like tense, you know, like these, these things were never supposed to be released. Oh. And you just sit there and listen to these historical people talk. <laughs> But it's Where not, are they it's, doing this? It's at some theater here in Stanton. In Stanton? Yeah. Interesting. Huh. And they're from out of town? They said it's been torn like all up and down. It's been played in Texas and Atlanta and stuff. So you don't know where they're going to they're gonna perform? Yeah, they said it's it's uh, it's like you just pay like a donation to get in. Hmm. And I didn't even think about it. I heard this thing. It's what reminded me of it. Where you can just take, they just found these old, you know, 
he like you know, somebody dug up OJ confessed and he did you know just whatever you find and they do it. All right, so let me see what a music style. Um, let's see what I would like to hear. Do they know every type of music style? Yeah, we're about let's to find, find out. out. Like trip. Try to stump it. Trip hop. All right, about what? What's the song? Trip about? hop. What is trip hop? You're about to. Well, the the question, and this is the way I was supposed to say it. A beautiful young lady wanted me to ask, "When did people stop uh, buying CDs?" So a trip hop song about when people stopped buying CDs. <laughs> you want to throw a wrinkle in there? Um, CDs and. Uh... Um, geese. Geese. <laughs> geese. G G E E S E. How do we word that? <clears throat> I've been hanging out. When do people stop buying CDs and geese? People still buy geese. <laughs> well, I don't know what they're going to take do with it. I don't know where they'll go with it. I know where you might go with it. I don't, I don't know. How'd you word this that is, one? You got to realize uh, I'm not used to working with an intelligent uh, <laughs> entity over. <laughs> Trip hop song about when people stop buying CDs and geese. <laughs> okay, let's see what it does with with, with a with a with a with a kazoo solo and, and chocolate. <laughs> chocolate geese? No, no. <laughs> Don't be silly, it's son. Where he, it's, it, he's. He, he, He's still an Easter with a chocolate oh, geese. Yeah, what's wrong? You didn't get a bunny, did you? <laughs> I didn't get a bunny. Oh, but I man. did get I did get a little e an egg with some chocolate on it. Oh, so well, there you go. That was pretty happy. Now, in Texas, and it's illegal to eat that. The little green grass in there, the little fake green grass. Yeah, you couldn't eat that egg in Arizona. You got to wait till it was chicken. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, how about that whole situation? Oh, my God, that's terrible. That's... I guess we ought not go there. But that would have made a good song. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. The prompt is, trip-hop song with a kazoo solo about when people stop buying CDs, chocolate, and geese. Here All right. We Here we go. A trip-hop song with a kazoo solo about when people stop buying CDs, geese, and chocolate. Did, that, did it sound like they gave up all three of those, or they, was that separate? They gave up the CDs. Yeah. Was geese and chocolate separate? It, it would take too long to type all that in. Let's just go with what we got. All right, we're done. We'll see. It's done. Oh, my God. Those guys are good, aren't Y'all have to tell me are. if it's trip hop or not. I wonder how many of them are doing that. Doing what? Well, how many of them are out there working, making that song right now? Mm. There's about, probably about 10 guys in a room, don't mm -hmm. you think? And one of them has a whip. Oh, I think it's the old Motown guys. They like, have yeah, a studio or something. Here we go. In the depths of the digital age we reside, where once beloved melodies have been denied, people stop buying CDs. They walked away. The echoes of forgotten tunes slowly decay. This is crazy. It's crazy. Are we in the room with the devil right now? Maybe. Where's the beat though? Is that trip up?
No but, geese. Man, a family a family car trip is never going to be the same. We can just have kids in the back room just, just request things. The Play mind <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's extraordinary. I wonder what happened to the geese. Did they give us two of them? Maybe the second one has geese. The sweet taste of <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that uh, Jasper is like one? a glass of red wine. Sorry, I'm having button trouble over here. I'll work it out later. You say there's not a second one? There's a second one, sorry. I'm just having some button trouble. There's a second one. Is there any geese in it? I guess the words no, will be the, the same. The words will probably be the same if it's like the other one. Well, we don't have to listen to all of it necessarily. We'll see what they did. I love that he's a different voice. Was that trip hop? That when she was singing, that was yeah, that laid back. Well, I guess the whole thing was. What are y'all saying? You're not saying trip, 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 trip hop. hop. Yeah, I didn't, that was new to me too, actually. Wow. The the song opens with the words, "In the depths of the digital age, we reside." Where once beloved melodies have been denied. The heck. Thanks, robots. In the depths of the digital age, we reside. Where once beloved melodies have been denied. Clutch says people will never people stop, stop buying geese. Buying <laughs> geese. <laughs> they walked away. <laughs> the echoes of forgotten tunes slowly decay. Ooh, yeah. I'll know Kazoo solos. I know, I was just Stumped them. I still got a roll. I still can do something. So we should just do a whole show where we don't, we're not even on here. We just program what, it, what we're going to say for 90 minutes and we just don't even show up. Make me super clever, <laughs> very insightful, <laughs> make funny. Me, make me 40 pounds lighter. <laughs> Remind me when I start a story I've already told. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moore's been quiet this whole time. I don't know why. That's pretty uh, scary, isn't it? It's it's unbelievable. On some level, that's got to say, some some people are out of a job. Def I mean, definitely, like, all the advertising work that I've done the last few years, I'm fired. There's, there's, there's just no way I still have that gig. But don't you think people like the human touch, though? I mean, I mean, if, if somebody's going to pay them some money or pay you, don't this you think technology they... is two weeks old? Yeah, but don't you think some people would want to pay you instead of paying that? But not really. They... Maybe like my mom would. <laughs> <laughs> but I need another commercial, Nathan. Coca for what, mom? What are you selling? <laughs> I'm all these damn commercials I'm making for you. <laughs> Oh yeah, like Coca Cola, they're not gonna, they don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the actual work. Coca Cola's probably, probably been doing it for years. I know, they've been doing it. They, <laughs> they, they've been doing it since the fifties. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, hey, Mister Hat, good to see you out there. Hey. That is crazy. I I I can't believe it. I I, I I'm dumbstruck, flabbergasted. God smacked. Is there any way you can? Is there any way you can delete it and not think about it anymore? Take it off your phone and not think about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I could. I doubt I will. No, you're gonna play with it. Mm -hmm. You can put in your own lyrics. You talk about like what we were talking about last night of trying taking a lyric and seeing different ways you could sing it, different versions of the same song or whatever. There's, mm -hmm then that would be yours, right? 
I, in That's some way. Where it's hard to you know, say what's yours and what's theirs at mm -hmm. that point. At that point. Huh. But part of the beauty, well, I understand for advertising and stuff, but part of the beauty of a song is, like any song you really like, you want to know something about the performer or, you know, the, re the recording or, you know, where was this person from? Where were they born? Yeah, that, this will just be a song. It's like this, I guess nowadays with kids, though, with everything, you know, on their phone, they don't really even care about that anymore, do they? And, I mean, they could pretty easily create Make a whole backstory <laughs> for you if you need that to enjoy it. No, look, at no him, look at him as a kid. I can't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they could come out with the whole behind the music <laughs> documentary. His whole before life. The, could you get to the point where you could say, what would Nathan Moore write about? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then you could just, you, you could still get credit for writing. But the mystery, the mystery is gone. Like, what if y'all knew every single thing about John Prine? You knew the reason he wrote a song, the reason he, how he, I mean, that, that's sort of the mystery well, of it. Well, that's the point here that I think we're going at is that there is no mystery. Yeah, that's what there I'm saying. There is no history. Right. Well, they're, that's not, the, they're not real people. I think we'll always want to have real people around. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, um, yeah. Now, and I think there are less and less opportunities for that, and more and more people are trying to fight back against it to, to do more group activities. And this technology is only like a week old. Yeah. Right. But I think that We're has... We're already scrambling to preserve our humanity <laughs> in light <laughs> yeah. of it. Right. <laughs> but I think that's like, you know, like LPs, vinyl, you know, records are coming back. I think people actually like just having... Sure. You know, yeah. I, used to, I used to sit in my basement with the thing, you know, the the lyric sleeve and read all that. Now everybody just has it on their phone. They just sit there, you know. Now you probably got a video to watch with it or something. Yeah, well, it's a t you know, the times, too. You, you can say the exact same thing about a newspaper. Right. But, you know, that's for all, the people like me, old people that grew up reading the paper. But if you didn't, the young people don't know anything about newspapers. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they're not worth reading anymore because nobody puts any energy into them any. It's just the national news and you can get that anywhere. But, you know, we've lost that. <clears throat> of course, the Dollar Generals don't do a whole lot for your humanity either. Mm -hmm. When you talk about stores, when you, the mom and pop stores compared to what we've got now. So we, you know, there are a lot of different ways it's eroding away. And I think people know that and look for more opportunities. Uh, churches is a good example too. Mm -hmm. The church used to be a, a real, and it still is for certain people in certain places, but if you drive around and you go to churches around in most towns, and there's plenty of churches, but there's not a whole lot of people in there. Mm -hmm. Mostly they're elderly, older people. Mm -hmm. The young people aren't going to church like, well, like they were except for some of these mega churches that know how to advertise. And, right. And, and they do it because of the bringing people together and activities and kids and things I'll like sort that. of quick plug right in, interject right in midstream here. Saturday, I think five o'clock, Emmanuel Episcopal Church Fish Fry. Ooh. Oh, man. It's gonna be good. Ooh, that sounds good. I'm, I'm gonna make them some tartar sauce. Is that your church right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be in the church basement there? Yeah, I believe so. You just come by and pick up a... Come on over. Fish fry. Yeah. I love fried fish. Yeah, I do too. It's been a minute. It'd be fun to see how, how they do it. <clears throat> I'm sure they have an old pro down there. Mm -hmm. Figured it all out a long time ago. I was, I was recently hanging out and we were talking about AI and how take all the jobs and I was I was making the case that you know that the the idea that it'll just free us all up to enjoy our our creative inner selves that have never been able to be unleashed like there's that utopian dream to where we could just have all this leisure time and dedicate it to stuff that actually we we love doing and grow in creative ways and stuff like that and I was I was I don't know if I believe that. I think it's an interesting idea to explore, but I, I, I was sort of playing devil's advocate at the time. I wasn't necessarily speaking from a place of conviction, but 
You guys have any I thoughts think that's, about that? I or? think that's a totally, at least in my in my um, experience, it's totally false. Now that I'm divorced and I have free time to do whatever I want, I spend more time sitting at home doing nothing than I ever did before in my entire life. Mm. When you're just by yourself and free, you just come home like, hey, I could do this, this, and this, but there's no way of saying, let's go do it. You just end up, oh, I'll just sit here and listen to music or read a book or something. Yeah, I, I, have, I would add to that. Uh, I, when I look around the world, I see a lot of people that don't know what to do with themselves. Right. And uh, that's where you see all the gambling and the alcohol. That's all, all their advertising. When both of those things have the effect of drowning out you doing anything constructive or that you're, you know what I mean? You're just, uh, alcohol is a good way to kill an evening and the next morning too. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. But Well, work is almost like a church. It's a community you belong to. You find out what's going on. You, somebody asks you to go out and get dinner after work or something, or you go to church, somebody invites you over to their house for, you know, brunch or something. If you're just by, if you just have free time, <laughs> you just, you know, end up, you know, with a bunch of books you bought. Like, oh, God, all this free time. Now, what do I do? I don't know anybody. I don't know what anybody's doing. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that's what I put, I always felt like uh, it's important to figure out what makes, what you enjoy doing and figure out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's where I, I made the comment that uh, libraries and birds are free. Uh, you know, you can get into bird watching on whatever level you want. I'm not saying you have to be a list maker or anything, but just to enjoy getting out and walking around the woods looking for birds is a wonderful therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and reading takes you to another world. And uh, so that's the one answer to the question of right. what do you do with all your spare time? Right. And I think people need to find that and do that. And then I think you're all right, but a lot of people just don't know what to do. And it, it can get destructive or self-destructive or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of people talking about that with the displaced workforce that AI could, will apparently ultimately lead to that, that a universal basic income like the businesses will be taxed that are moving to AI to pay people just a, each each citizen will get a certain amount of money each month right. as the machines do all the labor and work. Is that a dystopian or utopian vision of the future? What? And if that's what I think. Cause my, I have nephews that are like you know five and four years old. I'm like, man, what are they gonna do when they grow up? Just in the you know just in the last ten years, I've seen so many. Like when I first started working in insurance, we had people that pushed carts around and handed out files and papers and stuff. Now, if you get a paper in the mail, now you're like, "What old oh, man sent me this thing?" You know, <laughs> it's like why don't you text it to me? You know, it's like you don't. I mean, there was probably thirty people in the building that just paperwork mm -hmm. just gone. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. Um, and what do you replace it with? What type of jobs are, we, we need to create occupations for people. Mm -hmm. but, but you know what the irony is that uh, you can't find people to do handiwork around here anymore. Right. You know, just to come and clean out something or paint something, it, they're gonna be two weeks before they can get to you or they might not be able to get to you. And I, you know, you hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get good help. Uh, at the same time, there are people that don't have a job. And uh, so we have to retrain is one thing and rethink what our jobs are. Mm -hmm. There's not a thing wrong with working with your hands to make your living. And there's that's still going to be out there. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. And uh, so we got to retool that whole idea of jobs. There's, a lot of us don't think in terms of, you know, here's one thing. I think everybody, like they used to have a draft to make you an army, they ought to have a draft where you have to serve the community in education or whatever. <clears throat> but I'd like to see everybody try to teach a class of kids of sixth graders for a couple of days and then criticize 
teachers. Right, right. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Well, <laughs> and uh, so you could do a lot of things. Like, all could, right. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I just don't bring me back. <laughs> Well, that's a, if when you like like when I'm at work, and this is me. I mean, this is me 100. percent When I'm at work, I'm like I could be doing so much, man. I could be. God, if I was at home, I'd do this, I'd do that, and I'd write a story, and I'd, you know, do this, and you know, paint the kitchen. And then I go home on a Saturday and Sunday with my feet kicked up, like oh, you know, like don't, don't, like what am I doing? I had all these plans. Now I'm just sitting there doing. It's hard to stay motivated when you actually have the time. It's hard to get motivated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you need to somebody that like you probably wouldn't just for the fun of it make a um, the tartar sauce just you know but somebody asks you feel needed like oh that's nice you know I, if somebody would call me and say hey Kyle you write me a story I'd be up off the sofa like yeah 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 you know but if I'm just sitting there like I should write a story for somebody you know I'd lay there all day thinking about it you sort of need like a driving force to get something to motivate you yeah, so. and not if, everybody but me I know that's well true. and you have your own everybody has different things that. that you know, they want to do and they're attracted to. There's just a lot of subtle things like, uh, you keep, I keep going back to it, but I will because it's so prevalent, but you know, there's a whole lot of people that make their money off of alcohol. And so there's a big push to, that you really can't go out and enjoy yourself unless you have a few drinks. And uh, it's just not true. <laughs> I hate to tell them, but uh, but they're making money at it, and it's, it's part of the culture. But I, I don't see that as uh, a legitimate way to solve what you want to do with your spare time in a constructive way. Mm-hmm. So. But is that sort of the same thing? Like people think they will go out and have a good time, but then if you're out with your friends. You're just sort of sitting there, like, oh, what do you want to talk about? And then you all start drinking. Everybody's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. like everybody needs a prompt, or you know, they, well, that, everybody that's, has that's a crutch. True. I'm not going to deny that uh, it does help lubricate the social scene. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about uh-huh. that. But that's at a certain level, and for thousands of years, it's done that. Oh yeah, I mean, it's not like it's our only our culture. Mm-hmm. I was reading. Uh, yeah, you know, Russia, for example, <laughs> they start at breakfast and don't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and uh, Ireland, my Scotch Irish, and all of us, that, all of that background of very much alcohol mm-hmm. related. I feel I, like it, it's less of a drinking culture in the world today than there's ever been in his in human history i feel like the younger generations aren't into it like we were yeah i keep reading that too <laughs> if that's true that's only because they've got more dangerous things they're playing with <laughs> you think well I've, yeah. I've been reading that they've saying i mean this might be completely wrong or i'm reading it wrong but they're saying like the Use of marijuana now fights dimension and stuff like you it's some kind of cognitive Decline that doesn't happen, right? <laughs> and that's that's Lex like is victory well, that's dancing. Like, over. I, was, I was I was sitting there reading it. I was like, yes, it's perfect. I, you know, I, I'm been fighting dementia that way for years, <laughs> and I, I I think I'm winning, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how how do you, how do you study? How do they study that? It's a good question. How do they study a lot of stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, it's, or it's like if somebody has dementia, can you like you know give them a bunch of weed and they like start like they're yeah. Well, I might I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I might I might have dementia because this is the question I thought of today when I was sitting in the parking lot on my lunch break. When did men's underwear go from white to like decorative? To like, I don't know, underoos. Well, that's what I thought. Cause like. When I was a kid, I, I I had white underwear. I think my dad probably wore white underwear. And I keep seeing videos, you know, guys falling and tripping, their pants fall down. And I don't think I've worn a pair of white underwear in 30 uh, yeah, they, years. When, well, one is they switched to boxers. Yeah, right, boxers right. were always colored, right? Yeah, like, well, not always. They but they, they, Yeah, they had they weren't patterns. weren't like the tidy whiteies or whatever. The, yeah, your briefs were the white. And, uh, but they were like striped or something, right? Or like a... Lucky strike you know, for four leaf clover or something, yeah. but now like 
I mean, I don't think I have a pair of white underwear in the whole drawer. You know, back when they were still wearing the white underwear, back when they were younger, I had a wonderful idea. I wish I had implemented it uh, uh, that I, I think would have been a big seller. would have put me on uh, in the big money, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the underwear. I would, it would be yellow in the front. <laughs> And, and brown all the way around the back. And that just, just makes practical that, sense. I think it made perfect sense. You could wear them for months. <laughs> but the, the, the funny thing is you mentioned the underwears. When I was sitting there thinking about it, I was thinking, man, because that came out, I was a little bit, I mean, I was older. I wasn't going to wear underwears. But, I mean, <laughs> that, that's something you used to, like, tease, like, my little brother. You're, you should start wearing underwears. Then you get all upset. No, you know, like, that, like you would fight against what wearing underwear with any design or anything on it. You know, everything I got now has got like a dog on it or, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, if somebody gave me some white underwear, I'd be like, what the hell? It's like so out of style. You'd like, <laughs> probably give you a paint kit with it. <laughs> paint your own underwear. But like, what, when do you think that trend changed? Uh, about the time y'all stopped listening to the CD. <laughs> <laughs> the same year. <laughs> Which was a year, obviously, you've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> well, the person that asked me that is they're young, like the early 20s. And and they said that they people stopped listening to CDs in the year 2000. And I was like, man, 2000 was probably the top year. <laughs> One of the, wasn't that like a huge, that, that was still, everybody was buying CDs. Because that was right. before really the, you know, the downloads and stuff, wasn't it? But they yeah, I'd like, definitely say around like 2000. Early 2010s was when they really, I, I remember probably around 2013 or something saying, in five years there won't be any more CDs. Right. And it was a controversial declaration. Right. And then without much fanfare at all, they were just gone. Right. And we never even got to, I, I don't know, maybe all technologies are like this, where it just sort of disappears in the in the quiet of the night, like the Baltimore Colts or something, like just like, <laughs> it's like you wake up one day and they're gone. no fanfare, no no chance to say goodbye, no. You can still buy CDs though. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Artists put out albums and yeah. they put it out on CD media. Yeah. Cassette but, tape even artists yeah. are going are putting their stuff out on cassettes because yeah. it's just like a nostalgic thing. Yeah. And they're probably made. To, they they probably just with today's technology print them to order. So they, they don't create like a million cassettes and sit on the, they just like, if someone orders a cassette, it's made and packaged and sent like right, right like that. But even like when the CDs came, like records are dead, nobody's gonna buy that. Now people, it drives me crazy. People will pay like, you know, $40 for some album, you know, like, you know, they'll re-release, you know, the Bruce Springsteen's something or another, you know, Born in America. And you see it the record store for like $40. Like, God, go to any thrift store, you can find this for like $2, <laughs> you know? It's just the kids don't know that. They're just like, oh my God, you know, look. They, I guess, I mean, record sales to me are like the biggest ripoff in the world now. The new ones, you mean? Yeah, they're just, they charge you a fortune for them. Oh, it makes me so mad. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sorry, right. you'll be all right. Do they have a collectible value already? Is that part of the pricing? Yeah. You know, if you have the old ones, you know, because it was... Well, I know the old ones, but when they... Well, the thing is, like, when CDs came out and I was still buying records, you, everybody was getting rid of the record collections, you know, so they would right. just load them up at the record store. You could just get everything you wanted for cheap. And now those same ones are, you know, $50 or, you know, $40. I don't know what you have to pay for a pair of white underwear. What's that? It's probably a like hundred bucks oh, for a pair of white underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if you have the original yellow in the front, brown in the back. No, you you had that, I only ordered a hundred thousand of those. <laughs> those are really worth some money. You could have retired on that money. Of course, somebody do. You know, some people do that at home. They make them at home. <laughs> The cottage industry, they call it. <laughs> so do I have any uh, credits left? How did that work? I want to involve the chat. We'll make one more of these before we move on. Now, I might have messed things up trying to surprise you all then. I wasn't thinking about the credits. 
and I made. I, oh, you made one. I wrote a song while y'all were. Oh my god! <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you what'd you make of? Give him a little bit of power, and he takes over. <laughs> <laughs> On the left hand side there. Yeah. Now, is this thing smart enough that you would say, like, make a song in the style of Nathan Moore? Would they know that? Or they. Well, there's a. Because your songs are out there. There's a British there, aren't they? boy band, Nathan Moore, that's more famous than me. So it'd have to be the the one from the USA. But maybe. But, but we, your we stuff's could, online. Couldn't they? They could go get that real quick. You would think. We're at zero credits. We're at zero credits. I filled the credits, but hopefully this song is worth it. We'll... All right, well, so what was your prompt? A high-energy synth-pop song with three verses about a female cat named Pip who never misses a meeting. Each verse should describe a different kind of meeting and the dire reason why Pip did not miss it. Wow. Good grief. <laughs> All right. Somebody's been smoking weed during the show, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> that new shipment of edibles came in later, <laughs> early this afternoon. Right, here we go. Pip's got the rhythm. She's always on time. Never misses a meeting. That's a feeling I'm crying. <laughs> in the boardroom. into the courtroom till hell high ready to testify no case you let slide all these whispers that sharp cat no one misses with the legal maven it's got their back in the emergency room camps all around what? <laughs> the style of music? Synth pop. Synth Like you were saying about when people have spare time, I'll come home and have something to do. Like I was going to pay my taxes last night, and I ended up like three hours looking through Facebook. It's just so addictive. Like then I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to pay my taxes. I got to do that online. And I'll just go to bed and do it in the morning. And now I'm sitting here and still haven't done it. You know, it's like <laughs> so I can see myself if I had that just sitting there all night cracking myself up doing those type of things, mm -hmm. recording and sending it to somebody. Listen to this one. <laughs> like God, Kyle, go to bed. Stop sending me this crap. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite a be a fun little thing to play with. And what is it called? Is it just one? What's that one called? This one. I sign, I tried to sign up for the one Lex first sent me, and they were at capacity because it's a brand new thing. So they were the. I, I couldn't get into that one, but then I read about this one, so I went and signed up for that, and it it worked right out of the gate. It's called Suno. Suno. S U N O. Yep. And for free, you can get like it's got the rhythm. like five, oh. ten songs a day or something. Oh, is that the other That's version? That's the other one. Dang, it was about to go off. The Pip read, the read the lyrics to us real quick because I can't. It's hard for me to understand what they're saying. Pip's so it's about our cat Pip, who famously never misses a meeting. She's very antisocial, but she'll always. If Kether and I and Percy are sitting in her, she always is, never misses a meeting. Pip's got the rhythm, she's always on time, never misses a meeting, that's a feline crime. In the boardroom, she's the queen of purrs, even the CEO is in awe of her. <laughs> Pip struts into the courtroom, t tail held high, ready to testify, no case she'll let slide, the lawyers whisper, who's that sharp cat? No one messes with the legal maven, Pip's got their back. <laughs> Whoa. 
In the emergency room, chaos all around, doctors and nurses scurrying, but Pip's not found. She's the ultimate nurse, the hero they rely upon, saving lives with her purrs till the break of dawn. Saving lives with her purrs till the break of dawn. The last verse doesn't make sense. I don't understand. The emergency room, chaos all around, doctors and nurses scurrying, but Pip's not found. She's the ultimate nurse. She's like beyond it. She's transcended her actual purpose. <laughs> she's like, she can't be there. She can't be there for the for the emergency room. She's at a meeting. <laughs> right, right. It doesn't get to that, but that's what you would think, right? Okay, well, she's the ultimate nurse. She's in a nurses' meeting. That's way more important. So, <laughs> we had a terrible call wreck. Sorry, we had a nurses' meeting. I'll be I'll be there as soon as I can. Oh man, can you bring us back down to earth with your lesson plan yeah, today, or, or are we just gonna stay in orbit out yeah, here? Yeah, <laughs> give us something we can get our like some dirt under our fingernails yeah, or something. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, let's go right back to the most basic thing. This is the way I would start, and so if you're at home wanting to learn some chemistry, this is the way I would start a chemistry course with someone. So we'll start this and. Where to go if it if it works we'll keep going if not we'll go somewhere else. So this is like day one of chemistry lesson um, kind of thing. No, that's the day when I explain the rules and of all behavior right. and what you expect from and us. What is. I expect of them and how I grade and all that. So we're not going to grade you or no, anything. okay, except you know in my head. Maybe we need the challenge though. Yeah, well that's just true. There will Bring be out our there will be quizzes now. Okay, so I'm <laughs> committed to that last week um, what's the most common element in the world in the universe hydrogen that's what I was going to say too those are two wonderful guesses and you are correct oh wow now what what is hydrogen a, a gas well, it, it, could, it could be a gas. It's almost always a gas. What is hydrogen? Yeah, I mean, how would you, what's your thinking when you hear the word hydrogen? I mean, it's matter, right? Hydrogen is matter. So we're, stalk, we're starting the discussion about... I don't even know if I think of a gas as matter. I don't either. Yeah. What's the matter? What's the matter with you? <laughs> I've heard that one. <laughs> is hydrogen a bonding agent? No, hydrogen is matter. In fact, and oxygen's matter. And yes. So high, there are 92 naturally occurring elements all the way up to uranium. Uh, so the the simplest one. There's only 92. There's only 92. So everything that we experience is comprised of yeah, one but, of those. But what you mostly get is not elements. You get compounds. Mm where the different elements combined and like all most of your organic molecules are carbon and hydrogen and oxygen that's three different elements forming and they come together and i will show you how that works in the coming weeks uh, but the simplest element and you know most a star for instance is almost all hydrogen with and then the hydrogen fuses into helium. So you get hydrogen and helium as the main two. Th and then the others are formed too, the heavier ones, but it takes time. So they bounce into each other with huge amounts of energy and you get new elements. But you start with the simplest one, which is hydrogen. And really when you talk about hydrogen as an, as an element, if you look at what makes up, if we, if we think of uh, chemicals being made up of a proton, which is a positively charged particle, and an electron, which is a negatively charged particle, and they relate to each other. And if you, if you have one of each, you have an element. And if you lose one or gain one, you have an ion. It's become charged. Do you expect kids to know this? No, <laughs> I'm going a little bit too far. Let me just, let me show you something. 
Well, like, your, your question is, I don't, you're asking us what hydrogen is. I'm like, Kim, I just consider it a non-entity that's just well, so it's, small it's, you it's, can't even. That's, if, if you learn one thing tonight, it's more than a non-entity. It's a, when you say a gas, there's three states, there's three ways matter can exist. Hydrogen can be all stuck together. That's a solid. It can roll around each other. It's a liquid. But when it floats away from each other, it's a gas. Hmm. So the gases in this room are mainly nitrogen and oxygen. There's very little hydrogen floating around in here because it reacts very easily, and I'll show you why. Okay, so there's there's a, something we could look at, physical thing, and say that's hydrogen that we could see? Well, a solid? Yeah, the one thing I want to say about all of this is I'm creating a model. I'm not trying to describe actual reality necessarily. So when I say it's a positive particle. Someone else has been smoking weed tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of flexibility in your concept here. But a proton has a, has a certain mass to it. The electron is very small. It doesn't have a mass compared. It's actually, What's the nucleus in that? The, the, nucleu anything? the nucleus is made up of hydrogen and neutrons. Oh, excuse me, of protons and neutrons. And the electrons are spinning around. So as you think about a hydrogen, you think about one proton right here. Now, just don't worry about what a proton is. It's just a, 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 a particle, a ball, in this model that we're using. Okay. It's not really that, but we're going to imagine that. So it has a positive charge. Proton positive, easy to remember mm -hmm. with your glasses. Yeah. And so when you have a positive charge, well, you know what we've just described? We've described an acid already. An acid is just any, sub any substance that has more of these than it does the other side. The other side is electrons? Uh, the other side, it, this is, has a positive charge. The other side, I'll show you in a minute, has a negative charge. And together, you form a compound. But if, it, if it's by itself, it, it's a proton, and it's called a hydrogen ion. And the hydrogen ion concentration is how you measure the pH or the acidity. So if you have an excess of hydrogen, when you work... When you drink orange juice instead of water, you're adding hydrogen ions to your body. Now, that hydrogen <laughs> is floating around, and he's wanting to grab onto something. So that's what's going to happen in your stomach. He's going to grab onto something probably down the road. And, that, and if there's enough hydrogen, it, it creates a, a burning or whatever. It could react. But uh, Now, the electron comes along. And they and the electron and them establish an equilibrium or a balance. Can I, can, so is a pro, I mean, is a hydrogen always positive? Always. Okay. It, it always has a charge of one. Is a proton always positive? Yes. What did you just say? Hydrogen. Well, I'm saying you just both asked the same question. That's the one thing I want you to get. A, but a, every element has a proton, right? Every element has protons in its nucleus. Hydrogen is the only one that has one. That's what makes the elements different is the number of protons. The difference between hydrogen is one proton. If it has two, it becomes, you want to guess? Oxygen. No, lighter. Helium. What's, helium. So if it has two, it's helium. Uh, it's got three, it's lithium. Hmm. And it goes on up. Now... The proton is, you know, again, he can be in a compound, and he can be in a nucleus, or he can just be floating around. But he's always looking for an electron because he, he wants to be neutral. So he's looking to, you know, to com out. complete himself. Mm. You complete me, yeah. So you got one ele proton and one electron. That's all a hydrogen ion is. And when you talk about hydrogen out in space, you really don't always have the electrons. And mainly it's just a lot of protons, too. So you, there's a, just a lot of proton, which makes sense. They're, they haven't fused. If they fuse, 
In other words, the carbon that makes up our bodies came from where? Outer space. <laughs> our mom. Stardust. All, stardust, exactly. We are every, all, all the matter is produced in these stars over the millions of years, and then they accumulate on the outskirts and accumulate and form planets. But, uh, you know, so you got the sun up there, it's a big furnace, and it's not on fire, it's just hydrogen fusing, and that fusion gives off energy, and it keeps on feeding on itself and gets bigger and bigger, and you have a, but you're making a hydrogen, and then the hydrogens combine and form the other elements, so that's where you get all the, all the Hydrogens elements. combine to form other elements? Yeah. Because but, but hydrogen is, do they can they form can they bond with themselves? Or they need another. Well, the most satisfaction that they have, because they have, um, is if if they if this is hydrogen, right here, but um, stabilizing a, a hot, the hydrogen gas. It's not hot. It's H two. The words, in other words, two hydrogen atoms combine. So you get two of these, and you end up with two protons and two electrons because this circle out here, this outer shell, is satisfied when it has two electrons. It's more like a balance. If this electron's here and this electron's here, and they travel around like this, they're always in, and that's stable. So the hydrogen gas that you have is when two hydrogens have combined. But they burn very easily, so you can burn hydrogen as a fuel, and the product you get when you burn hydrogen would be what? Oxygen, carbon dioxide, no, not carbon dioxide. Makes a great fuel because the product is wonderful. Gas. Water. Water. Mm. Yeah, just add an oxygen and you got water. H2O. So when you burn hydrogen, you get water. What? <laughs> Are you making this up? <laughs> Some of it. But so, <laughs> water, so water is made by burning hydrogen? Yes. You can make it. Not all of it is, but you can make it that way. Just for anybody Good. out there that we want to see the... <laughs> then, it, then, then anybody out there that, that thinks me and Nathan are ignorant? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what's the hydrogen bomb? That's just uh, easy, that's just, it's just easy it's, to ignite it's it? It's when you have a, uh, an atomic bomb that gives off enough energy from it to cause a fusion reaction, which is where these elements fuse. Because it takes a whole lot of initial energy to get it started, but once it starts, it creates more energy. So now that's is, what a fusion reactor is. Now, is that because hydrogen, hydrogen, like you said, is just one proton, so that's a stable thing to work with, so it's not going to blow up in your face while you're working with it, sort of? Well, hydrogen will blow up in your face, but what you get when it blows up is water, and it doesn't blow up all at once. So you end up with a lot of water, which is a safe thing to have around when, you, when you're burning stuff. So, mm -hmm. so why don't they do that for like in the desert for people that don't have water and stuff? Well, because the, what, how do, where do you get the hydrogen? That's the problem. You know, the sun is, make it, is doing it because it's got all that hydrogen. But to make the hydrogen, you have to pull it apart from something it's already reacted with and it takes energy to do that. Wow. So then, so it's hard to, it's hard to make it a profitable thing. If they could ever figure out a way to do fusion, they call it cold fusion, you hear about it mm, periodically, it. but they're working on it. But if they ever figured out how to do that, it could solve a lot of our energy problems. Mm -hmm. Had, so, there was a recent breakthrough in that regard. It's I hadn't heard about that. Mm -hmm. Now, are you just telling us this to make this AI stuff seem ch childish and simple? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to keep it simple, but it, it's hard to answer. You know, like, I didn't want to get to water tonight. So, there's, 
if there's 92 elements, is that 92 different kinds of protons? No, they're all the same. The protons, <laughs> wait, wait. So the protons that, all the same? Yeah, it's just the number of protons. <laughs> number of protons. If you have eight protons, you're oxygen. If you have 10 uh, protons, you're neon. Interesting. But so there, there's neon's there, one. Neon is is an element. It's so that light over there actually has that element inside it. Yeah, and the reason it works so well is that it's already satisfied these outer shells, so it doesn't want to react. So it can absorb a lot of energy and stay neon, and it glows, but it doesn't react. Whereas other things will burn or whatever. So, so just to get so just to get this straight, the, <laughs> just to get this straight. the, the world has ninety two elements, but a bitch ain't one of them. <laughs> Not sure. That's a stupid. No. That's a stupid song. I got ninety nine problems, but a bitch ain't one. Of them. I've never heard that one. I, I couldn't follow you. Uh, no, but the answer is no. No. So so, uh, so it's up to 92 protons? Yeah. That's how it works? And after that, it's just too unstable to stay together. What has 90? Uranium has 92 protons? Very good. Wow. Wow. And it's unstable because it's too big. The nucleus is too big. So every once in a while, something will pop out of there. And that's called radioactive decay. And the number of electrons for each element does that change? The number of ele if it's an element and it's an if it's a neutral atom of that element, they always have the same number. So it would have 92 electrons. But oh, they'd be the out same here. Number. Yeah, to be an atom. So hydrogen has one proton and one electron. Exactly. It's a simple. I just starting to understand. Get. And it. the second, what's the second one? Helium. Helium has two protons and two electrons. Exactly. Now there's another guy in there called a neutron, but he's not really that important to the discussion. He just adds mass, but he doesn't. What's the neutron? Well, the, it's hard to, here's all I would, the easiest way to remember it is, a proton is like God took uh, a proton and electron and squeezed them together and made one particle because that's exactly the way it behaves. It has no charge, so it has no positive or negative because it's got a proton and electron, it's balanced. And its mass is a little heavier than a proton, which would be if it had an electron in it. So, uh, so a, ne a neutron is just a semantic explanation uh, of the two no, no, no. Semantic is a, sur is a definite particle, like helium. A real helium has two protons and two electrons like we've got. It also has two neutrons. So its mass is four, where a helium atom's mass is one because it doesn't have any neutrons. So the neutrons, you shouldn't worry about the neutrons. <laughs> it's like a bystander. It doesn't play. But it's in there. It's in there and it uh, adds. Uh, uh, the third, what's the third element? Lithium. Lithium, which is also like used in batteries, just like hydrogen is. Yeah, but, it's a, it's. But, it's but a, a lithium is three protons, three electrons, and three neutrons. It's, it's, it's actually got four neutrons. Oh, it can have different numbers. Gotcha. But don't worry about the neutrons. Just, it's, That'll be next year. That's extraneous. Well, it's just not important to understanding the chemistry of it because mm. it doesn't react with anything. It just makes things heavier. Um, so if you if you if you take like the fifth element, whatever that would be, and it has five protons and five electrons, and you remove an electron, and now it's five and four, what, what is that, what's happening then? Now you have a positive nitrogen ion. It's like metal. It's metal positive because it's more protons than electrons. The, it has more positive protons, it has one more. Like that lithium, the number three, it's the most active metal. Lithium is a very active metal. And we, you hear about the batteries. That's why they use it in batteries. Yeah. Right? And the reason is it's got the two electrons that balance everything, but one of the electrons ends up in the next shell because this first shell only holds two. 
they balance out perfectly just here and here and they but if you throw another electron where does he go well he has to go out to the next shell and he's out there by himself and he's real easy to pull off and now you don't have lithium atoms that's why you don't run into calcium the element near as much as you do calcium ions and you know, when in your body right now you got a lot of calcium floating around but it's all in the form of it's lost its electrons hmm. but uh, so you can quickly get into the chemistry of, of compounds and I don't know that we really want to go there but I can just if we establish protons and electrons and then I'll just talk about the energy shells next time, but I don't think we've... John Dodson in the chat wants to know why do they stay together? Uh, well, it's the idea of positive and negative, which again is an artificial thing. There's no such thing. You know, there is no positive and negative. It, it's the idea that these want something and these want to give it away, and we call it positive and negative, but they're attracted to each other. And when they, they're completed... Uh, they're com they're fulfilled. Whatever the positive ion needs, the electron ne fills that need. So then you have a balance, and now you have an atom. Do they act? Can the protons and electrons actually exist separate from each other? Oh yeah, yeah. And that see that's all. When you have a hydrogen a hydrogen ion, and we're going back to the acid thing. When you when you have an acidic taste. That acid is because of these proton ions. It's not hydrogen gas or not hydrogen, the element. It's the protons that you're getting. High, and they call it hydrogen ions. pH stands for the point of hydration, which stands for the level of uh, the hydrate or hydrogen that you have. And it's all about the level of hydrogen ions that you have in your body. So, because you have a constant balance, balance battle between the H's and the OH's in the world, or po different positive and negatives, they, it's not just hydrogen. But I'm saying the simplest. But if you got more hydrogens in your body than you do oxygens, you're going to have an acidic body. So that's why if you feel acidic stomach, you take an antacid which combines and pulls those hydrogens, oh, wow. and they react and you neutralize them. That's what, that's all neutralization, and there's the word for the day right there. I didn't even think about that. But here's, here's your first a chemical equation, because what happens in the world is that the hydrogen, which again is made up of two atoms combines with the oxygen, which is also combined, it's diatomic with two atoms, and you get two water molecules. So you burn hydrogen with oxygen. When you burn something, you usually are using oxygen as the oxidizer to burn it. Now this is not a balanced equation, by the way. And what's the two, the two stands for? The two means it's, that there are two atoms in that formula. This is the formula for hydrogen, meaning two atoms make up a molecule. Two atoms make up a molecule of oxygen. I'll show you why next week. And that <laughs> forms water. Oh, so water is actually two hydrogen. And one oxygen. Okay. And I'll, I don't, the reason is the oxygen's got six in its outer shell. I won't, let's don't do that tonight. <laughs> was, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so really a hydrogen is two. Now, two wait a minute, before you leave, that equation, leave. we're going to balance it. Goodbye. Uh, well, the bell rang. Yeah. Uh, this equation is, let's balance our first equation class. H2 plus O2. Do they have this? The, uh, all a balanced equation is you have the same the correct formulas and you have the same number of particles on each side. So how many H's have you got and how many O's have you got on each side and is it balanced? Well, it seems like you now have four H's. Is that is that two H2O? Yep. 
So you got four H's here. Which creates two, two hydrogens. Here. So we're gonna put a two here. And you just balanced your first equation. Two hydrogens combining with one oxygen form two water molecules. Oh, how come you never hear that when people say water is H2O? It should be two H2O? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm just no. saying in this equation there okay. are two H2O. Right. You might have a million H2O's if you have a glass of water. No, if you, if you just have like the tiniest little thing, like if you just had like the most basic, tiniest hydro, two hydrogens and one oxygen, you're not going to see water though, are you? Not going to see water. And it's not going to actually create a little drop of water. Is it's it? going to form a drop of water. It's going to form a water molecule. Right, but you would need like thousands of them to make a drop, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You'd need a, I mean, 18 milliliters of water has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And you can't even write 23 zeros in a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it goes across the whole blackboard. So it takes a huge, it's a huge, we're talking about a lot of these little atoms, uh, but that's what's going on at the atomic and molecular level. Now, what year was what all this trip. stuff discovered? Excuse me? Like how, I, I think of somebody like in the 1800s figuring this out, but how did they figure that out way back it then? It was not till the 1800s that chemistry evolved. From it's still pretty new. It's how do they even know how, what genius thought of that? Well, remember that, again, this is a model, and the model works, and that's why it has survived. But it doesn't really, When you, I think a lot of people think it's reality. It's not, re, it's not these are not little balls. They're, we're down in quantum mechanics now. That mm -hmm. It's beyond our ability to really know what we're talking about except on a modular level, which is what we're doing. So, you know, it's still pretty good thinking, and there's a whole lot of cool thinking going on to create chemistry, but it's still not explaining everything. <laughs> because the actual reality is more mystical than we could actually comprehend? I'd say mystical, you could go there. I'd just say it's more complex and impossible to study because you can't get to that level. Right, because it's you, you like don't, infinitely don't, small. Or it's tiny. infinitely small. Right. And uh, we don't really know exactly what we're dealing with. I mean, it has more to do with energy than it does matter. That's what I've always felt anyway. That it's, you know, we always think there's matter and energy in Einstein. Because matter, matter is just energy condensed to a slow vibration. You, uh, to a certain vibration. That's no. a good way. Of, I think that's a good way. I of learned that from it. Bill Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Bill will teach us some things. <laughs> now, is there, is there a chemist that you admire that you really look up to? You think that's like your favorite? No. Uh, well, uh, I mean, some of the more recent ones are like, well, Richard Feynman, but he was a, more of a physicist, and uh, but you know, not not so much. I have a few. Yeah. You know. Do you know who the first was? Well, to I even know. propose any of these models. I or? don't know that there was a first. I think it happened a lot. Uh, at different schools of thought were in different universities in in Europe. What was the like to his question? Like, what do you? How do you? How would you describe like the f the first day of thinking like this back then? Like, what was it that someone witnessed or experienced that <clears throat> led them to these models? Or... My reaction, that first thing I think is the law of conservation of mass, and they could do very con concise studies of like if you take a piece of magnesium and you burn it which you get that beautiful flame that can put your eye, kill your retina. But, uh, but magnesium burns with a really bright light. So it's like a but, mini sun or something. Yeah, you don't want to be looking at it. Uh, but at any rate, when you burn, the, what, what I meant by conservation of mass is if you take so many grams of this, it's always going to combine with the same number of grams of that. And you're always going to get the exact same amount and when you saw that, that started to click that there must be a pattern here. And that pattern's where they followed it. 
and created this model to explain it. And it, along the way, it kept explaining different things. And uh, it's just amazing what it does explain to a everyday mind that has to deal with chemistry all the time, whether it be in the kitchen or the bathroom, you have to deal with chemical issues all the time. It's good to know a little bit. But of it. like were these craftsmen or doctors? Like if you just show me this chair, I would just think somebody made this chair. I would never think what is the what is like the people who, who looked at this and said, what is this made out of? Well, these people were always interested. They're, they were the scientists of the universities. So they had time. <laughs> they had time to build. They hadn't been AI'd yet. And, uh, they, uh, they had time to think about things. But they'd sit around and think about things, and then they'd publish. They'd do a study, and they'd publish, and then it would get read by other people, and it would grow. You know, the Russians would learn. There would be Russian chemistry People have done some great stuff. So, you know, a lot of different countries were sharing their knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, human beings aren't dumb. Well, on a well, on a day to day basis. <laughs> In general. <laughs> as as a collective. But uh, yeah. Wow. That's that was the tip of the iceberg right there. Yeah, yeah, if you stayed taste, with just it. Just a little I'd, taste. Well, I'd hope I didn't lose you, but uh we Well, I don't feel like I understood it, but I definitely grasp a couple of concepts that are very intriguing for sure. Right. I'm well, that's, curious that's to learn what, more. That would be all you'd need to do because we'll keep adding to it and answer any questions. We'll, we'll go as slow as we need to go. We're not, we don't have a, a schedule, an agenda. <laughs> Boy, this is probably the hardest. <laughs> episode ever for what song to, to close it with. Well, I don't think we need you, son. Uh, hit, it, hit, it. <laughs> hit it, Lex. <laughs> oh, if we had two credits uh, it, left, we could be like a leaving song. It, it, for... <laughs> it's been, been nice having you here on the evening, but we don't need you anymore. Let's, let's hear about Pip the cat never misses a meeting again. <laughs> <laughs> We could take it to the uh, chat for the request line to see which, oh, yeah. which AI-generated song would you like to hear tonight <laughs> as a leaving All I ever wanted was hand to mouth To live off the land somewhere in the south To have a little garden and a child or two and a little lady saying, I love you. Here I am waiting tables. My shift is hardly through. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Indians in picture books dancing for the rain Pioneers in rowboats off the coast of Spain They're chasing down the buffalo falling manly in the plain They're being held by Mother Earth and calling her by name Only the 7-Elevens open I got pockets full of change Whoa, whoa Yeah, yeah Do you remember back when dinner took all day? When grandma played the banjo and we'd sit and sway When night was lit by lamplight and the flicker of flame and ten miles was way too far away and now I got a Slurpee and a hot dog And a long look on my face Whoa, yeah, yeah Time to do what no AI apparently will 
ever be able to do. Grab your kazoos. <laughs> Hold on to your underwear. <laughs> Revolution's still being fought and it's not too late Cause revolution's just a return to a previous state Well then either by those who only take what they need Or by those who pollute the world with their greed I shall be delivered my dream indeed Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah Once again, perfect choice. Yay! Yay! Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Fuck you, AI. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. <laughs> well said. And well where said. was Pimp? <laughs> Pimp missed the meeting. <laughs> that was great. Great call. <laughs> that was my subconscious. That was nailed it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Fun show. Well, thanks for trying to stick with me through hiding. Oh, yeah. That's, that's some good stuff there. Even though I didn't understand.